You know, I had always thought, you know, America, it seems very familiar to Sodom and Gomorrah. I had always thought that. Maybe you've thought that too. But after what I've seen and what I'm about to show you in these past, like, literally days and hours, it just further confirms to me, I don't know about you, but to me, it confirms that America is Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. Because the things that we're allowing to take place, the things that we're glorifying, the things that we're putting on a pedestal, the things that we're going out of our way to validate is wicked, is demonic. And there's going to be a price that's got to be paid for it. But let me just show you just what I'm talking about and just strap in, all right? <laughs> put your put your seatbelt on because it's going to be a ride. Let me just start with this. Drag queen and invited to Biden White House once performed for a two-year-old boy. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what they're talking about. But just take that headline in. Let it sink in. And you might be asking, okay, well, why is he inviting a, a drag queen to, to the White House in the first place? Well, if you haven't been keeping up with the news, I mean, this has been a massive story. Biden signs same-sex marriage bill into law, calls it a good day. Now, check this out. I don't hate anybody. But I can't get with those groups of people who glorify sin and who have pride in their sin. I can't get with that. It doesn't mean I hate them, but I can't get with that. I also can't get with people who are actively trying to deconstruct traditional marriage. Because traditional marriage, it comes from God. It's a gift from God to be shared with a man and a woman that's traditional marriage. Traditional marriage, a man and a woman. But now we're moving into a territory where essentially marriage is whatever the people want it to be. It could be a man and and and, and a man, a, a woman and a woman, a, a woman and a dog and a cat and a kangaroo. It does it really doesn't matter. At this point they're making it a joke. They're, it, it's it really does not matter. And so this is a story that I had talked about. Um, I don't remember how many episodes ago, but I talked about it probably a couple weeks ago because this was coming down the pipeline. But now Biden has finally made it official. And same sex marriage has has it's it's been legal. So it's not like he had to put this into effect in order for people to get married. They could already do that. It's been legal this is just fur further just pressing the narrative and further pushing the agenda. <sighs> but Biden calls it a good day. And this bill, it's very important for Christians to understand because it has implications, potential implications that could put a lot of our values in jeopardy as it comes to Christians as it comes to marriage. And there was hesitation specifically on the right with Republicans um, because, you know, Republicans are the ones who have values that align with the Bible most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. There's not many people on the left, um, unfortunately, that believe in the Bible, that follow the Bible, that, that believe that the Bible is the solution to our problems. That's mainly coming from people on the right, from the conservative side. Um, and a couple of people I just want to highlight just real quick, and then I'm going to show you some craziness. But it says, while the bill received some GOP votes, most Republicans opposed the legislation and some conservative ad uh, advocacy groups lobbied aggressively against it, arguing that it doesn't do enough to protect those whose religious beliefs prohibit them from agreeing to provide services or same sex couple for same sex couples. And this is what we talked about um, a few episodes ago where I was saying, you know, it's a slippery slope because you could have, say, for example, just keep it simple, uh, you know, well, simple, whatever that means nowadays. 
nowadays, but let's just say a man and a man want to get married. Let's let's say they want to do that in your church, right? But let's just say your pastor is a man of God and he ain't going for that. And he says, no, y'all, you're not getting married in my church. And then let's say those two men who want to get married, then sue your church because under this new law, the federal government has to recognize um, whatever the states deem to be marriage. So if the state deems that, you know, a man and a man can get mar- can get married, which is already a thing, but if, if, if that's something that they want to do and your church does not want to provide that, you know, quote unquote service, then they could be sued and then your church could lose their tax exemptions. They could lose whatever assistance, their grants, you know, whatever assistance they might have from the government, they could potentially lose that. And that's why I say it's a slippery slope. Now, Biden is ensuring that this is not going to happen, but there's still a lot of concern that this is going to end up happening. And one person said, uh, this is Representative Bob Good. Now, I don't know who Bob Good is, but yo, shout out to Bob because he's spitting some facts. Bob Good said, God's perfect design is in, is indeed marriage between one man and one woman for life. And it doesn't matter what you think or what I think, that's what the Bible says. Shout out to Bob Good. Once again, I don't know who Bob Good is, but shout out to Bob Good because he's spitting the fact. And one more, and then I'm going to show you this craziness, but one more. This is Representative Vicki, I think Hartzler. She said, um, choked up as she begged colleagues to vote against the bill. So she was choked up as she begged her colleagues not to vote for this bill, which uh, she said undermines natural marriage between a man and a woman. I'll tell you my pri- pri- my priorities, she said, protect religious liberty, protect people of faith, and protect Americans who believe in the true meaning of marriage. Now, let's get to this story, because I had to lay the foundation in order for you to understand why these individuals were invited to the White House in the first place. Now, this first individual was invited to the White House in order to celebrate the signing of this bill. And once again, this is not hate. This is me just simply saying this goes against God's design. And now we're glorifying it at a national level. And these people who are being invited to the White House are openly involved with children, grooming children to believe their ideology. This is a, a, I guess it says they're doing a drag story hour. So this is the person who was invited to the White House. And honestly, I don't even really want to show that anymore because it just kind of makes me uncomfortable. But this is the person who was invited to the White House. This is who they're glorifying. This is who they're putting on a pedestal. This is who they want you to believe um, is a good representation for Americans, for your children. And something else that I thought was very interesting is this individual on the on the left hand side. This individual's name is Breda Filter. And let me just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to scroll fast because it's kind of crazy. This is Breda Filter. Do y'all remember Breda Filter? This man performed in a church service. And this is another individual who was invited to the White House. And now people say, well, it's only a small segment of churches who are allowing this. Because if you if you if you didn't see um, an episode that I made um, maybe like three months ago, I went over open and affirming churches. So open and affirming churches are essentially churches who manipulate the scripture, who manipulate the Bible and make it fit the agenda of LGBT agenda. 
in order to obtain higher membership, more money, more profit, more tithe, more offerings, they manipulate the scripture and they allow these individuals to come into their churches, dress how they're dressed, not actually giving them the true gospel, not actually giving them a path towards repentance, but they do it because they're open and affirming, and this is what they call love. I went over these churches. I'll link the video somewhere if you want to watch it. But this is what they'll say. Well, it's not happening in your church. It's just happening in, the, in these open and affirming churches. And then they say, okay, well, it, it's not happening um, in, in your house. It's just happening in the White House. But then pretty soon, the more and more they, they try to make this normal for our children, pretty soon, it's going to be happening in your house. And now all these people who told you it wasn't a big deal, it wasn't a big deal, it's going to be happening in your house. And now your children are dressing up in, 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 in these type of outfits. Call me crazy, but we have an issue on our hands. A massive issue. Because men don't want to be men at higher levels. Testosterone is, is dropping rapidly. Look up the facts. Pull it up. Testosterone in men is dropping rapidly. Men don't want to be men. And, and the men that do want to be men are having a hard time being men because of the food that we're being fed, the chemicals that are in our water, the, the chemicals that, are, that is in our environment. Testosterone is dropping. Women don't want to be women. Not all women, not all men. There are still some, you know, children of God, men and women of God that are holding it down. But this world is drifting further and further and further away from God. And then we have this story, which I haven't even talked about because I've just been so... I'll be honest with y'all. I don't like just only talking about like negative stories, but unfortunately, it's just so it, it's it's here. This is the world that we live in. And I try to bring some light by giving y'all scripture and, and allowing you to see God in these situations so to give you hope. I try to do that. But the fact of the matter is these stories are dark and I think they're only going to get darker. But I'm sure that you've heard about this story. This is, um, I can't read all of this because I, I want to keep this family friendly, but it says, Dean of Students brags about teaching, you can read that, children play with, you can read that, I'm not going to read it, but you can read it. And this is uh, at a private school. So could you imagine paying thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Could you imagine paying tens of thousands of dollars just so your kids could be groomed? Could you imagine that? That's what's happening in Chicago. They're teaching kids perverted things that no kids should be exposed to. And they're calling it inclusive. They're calling it inclusive. And if we don't get with the narrative, if we don't follow the agenda, then we're bigots. And that's why so many people view Christianity as hateful nowadays. Because we have a firm foundation. We have a firm foundation. And that's why Christians are considered hateful, because this world it goes with the wind. It goes with the wind. They might believe, this world might believe, you know, one thing one year, and then their beliefs might totally shift the next year. And if we don't follow the perverted ways of this world, then we're bigots. But how far are they going to take this? Because they said this was never going to happen, but yet it's happening. They, they, they told us not to worry about it, but now there's reason to be concerned. Is there not? 
Elite Chicago Private Schools Dean of Students brags about bringing in LGBTQ Health Center to teach, you could read that, to minors. That's a really cool part of my job, passing around, you can read that. You can read that. That's what's happening right now. And you know what's so funny? Well, it's not funny, but it, it, it's really sad, actually. It's 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 really sad, but I, I some I, at this point I don't have any other words in my vocabulary to describe it other than being funny. But you know what's so funny? The school that this individual works at responded, and they said, "Hey, I'm paraphrasing, but they said, "Hey, ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with what he said. Ain't nothing wrong with what he said." That's the program that we have. That's the inclusive program that we have. There's nothing wrong with what he said. His words were manipulated, even though they have this full encounter on video. The school still said the stool, the school, the school still came out and said that his words were manipulated, that it was edited. But they have the full unedited video of him making these statements repeatedly. But the school stands by their employee. This is Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. We're far more advanced now in the ways that we sin. Listen to me. We are far more advanced now more than ever in the ways that we sin far more advanced. And I read this verse yesterday. Um, I posted a video about it. I forget uh, the the exact verse. It might have been it might have been in first Timothy. It might have been. But it was talking about how we will create new ways of sinning. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're actively creating more and more new ways of sinning. We're more wicked than we've ever been before. And that's why you need to come to Jesus. That's why you need to be saved. That's why you need to be washed of your sinful nature, of your, of your sins. You need to be washed in the blood. You need to get saved. You need to, you need to get baptized. You need to repent. Because all of this is getting more and more serious more and more crazy. And this is not to scare you, but this is to simply just to let you know this is Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. The Lord is coming back. You need to protect your children. You, you can't just trust any person to influence your child. You can't just trust this world to be a positive influence on your children. We can no longer just trust these teachers to be a positive influence on our children. We need to be very, very mindful and alert and awake right now more than ever. Because all of this stuff going on, all of this stuff going on, all of it is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> so, hey, get in my comments. Let me know what you think about all of this that is happening right now. Am I overreacting? I'd love to know your opinion in the comments. If you want to support this ministry, share this video. That will help a tremendous amount um, in terms of the algorithm, just recommending this video to more people. And subscribe if you have not already. I'm out.